I started this channel during the pandemic as a way to help people manage their money better, and that obviously includes investing. And some of the most often asked questions when it comes to investing are naturally, where should I invest my money and why? That's kind of the obvious question. But then people typically ask, how can I get the right type of information without wasting my time? And finally, how can I get all of the information if I wanna drill down to my own analysis, my own due diligence? And the cool thing is today, I have the answers to at least two of these questions. I partnered with a company called Seeking Alpha, which is really one of the best platforms that I have come across when it comes to investing information and level of data and really the depth of data that you get. Uh, the type of data and analysis that I really only ever see when I use the Bloomberg terminal, which is a $25,000 a year license fee. So compared to $25,000 a year to Seeking Alpha, uh, to celebrate this partnership, we decided to give you their uh, premium subscription at $14.99 a month, which is a 50% discount. And that includes a two week free trial. So you can totally test drive this on your own before deciding this is for you before spending a single dollar. So over the next few minutes, let me walk you through some of the cool features that Seeking Alpha has and show you how to use it. There's so much really good and kind of detailed information on the Seeking Alpha platform that I think the best way to go around is, is just to jump right in, show you on an example of a specific stock, and then we'll attack it from all the different sides. And I'll show you the best off of kind of the features that I personally use. And there's just so many, we could really spend a good two hours on this. So uh, here's Alphabet, right? The parent company of Google, everybody knows it because we all use Google uh, to search for stuff. But um, I want to start here on the right side with the rating summary, uh, the factor grades and the quant ranking. And when you talk to David Jackson, the CEO of Seeking Alpha, he'll tell you that this is really kind of the overriding philosophy of how they design this website, how they design the analysis around a specific stock. They effectively want to give an investor a two or three minute snapshot, an immediate impression of, you know, is this stock worth my time? Should I consider investing in it? Should I consider doing more analysis. And so this is what they do on the right side here. When you look at the rating summary, you have the essay authors, right? That's all the contributors uh, to Seeking Alpha. And there's some really good ones and we'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, Wall Street, that's the, the uh, all the Wall Street houses that are covering all the research investment bank houses that are covering Google and then the quant ranking. So we'll talk about the quant ranking in a minute. But if you scroll down here, just below all the articles, you see that Seeking Alpha versus Wall Street, right? So you see Seeking Alpha authors rating by uh, you have 12 authors in the last 30 days that covered um, Alphabet. On the Wall Street rating, uh, which is, you know, you see it's slightly higher in fact, Wall Street's always kind of more bullish, right? Because that's really their job to kind of push stocks higher because they uh, want to get that business from these companies too. So uh, it's no, not surprising that Wall Street is a bit bullish here, but you have 47 analysts in the last 90 days. And right below, you see what the bulls say and what the bears say, right? So in fact, for Alphabet here, the bears are not saying anything. There's nobody's really bearish on this stock. But for example, if I click right here to Amazon and we look down here at the same analysis um, for uh, what well, the bulls say and the bears say. So you have these opinions, right? And then you can start drilling uh, into, again, the articles and the opinions here. So now let's go back up to the factor grades here at the top. So Seeking Alpha effectively, again, in the spirit of giving you just a, like, a two, three minute snapshot of what the company is and what the company is doing, it's kind of evaluating every single company on five different uh, criteria, right? They give you the valuation, the growth, profitability, momentum, and revisions. And they kind of rank it from A plus to F. Uh, again, with the colors, right? You see the D is, is red, not very good. Uh, and A plus is very, very dark green. So, um, and they give this to you now and they give this to you three months ago and six months ago. So you kind of see the evolution of where these rankings were. And then you can click on uh, one of these and, and kind of start drilling down, right? So if you go to valuation, for example, you see that uh, clearly Alphabet is, uh, the, the valuation ranking isn't very good versus all the other stocks in the sector, but maybe somewhat justified, right? Because they just keep printing money. The, the results for the last quarter of 2021 are just ridiculously good. And the stock is getting expensive, but on a valuation perspective versus all the other stocks, maybe not doing so well, right? So this stock uh, is getting expensive relative to the rest of the sector. But then you, for example, click on uh, profitability, A plus, right? Strong A plus. And you look at some of the financial ratios for profitability and uh, Alphabet is just doing amazingly well. What I like here, this category uh, among these five categories is the momentum. I like this momentum here because it really shows you how the stock has been performing 
over the last few months. And if you scroll a little bit lower, you start seeing charts of um, how Alphabet is doing versus the S&P 500, right? So on a relative basis, uh, is it more expensive versus the average of the market or less expensive? And you kind of, again, keep scrolling down and you start getting the moving averages relative strength, right? A lot of these charts you can get on any charting platform, any broker platform that you may be using. But again, it's nice to kind of see this all together here. And finally, I want to close this section on the quant rating here. I promised I was going to talk about this. Quant is a, is a word I feel that a lot of the times people use when they want to confuse other people. Quant is kind of like this mystery word. What are really quants doing? Uh, quants are smart people that uh, analyze data and uh, drill deep into algorithmic trading and use data to kind of um, give you and build quantitative strategy um, without going into too much details. Effectively, what Seeking Alpha here is doing is they're taking more than 100 data points uh, in terms of financial ratios uh, and performance ratios, valuation ratios, and put it together in their own algorithm and strategy and give you a specific rating for a stock. So if you click on the quant uh, section here, you kind of drill down again in the quant history and what it was, you know, it really can go deep down into what it was and, and how we evolved over time. Um, what I always want to know is kind of who built this and who these people are, right? So when you kind of look behind Seeking Alpha, who's actually in charge of this? The person that is running the quant strategy at Seeking Alpha, his name is Steven Kress, and this is a very experienced person. Um, he was an equity analyst at Prudential. He was a head of a proprietary trading desk at Morgan Stanley, a chief investment officer at a hedge fund, uh, built his own strategy. So this is somebody that's that's been running this for Seeking Alpha for a while, for a long time, in fact, and knows what he is doing. And equally, David Jackson, who is the CEO and the founder of Seeking Alpha. Uh, this is somebody that started in the Treasury Department uh, in the British government in London, then worked at the Bank of Israel, and then worked uh, for Morgan Stanley as a technology analyst. So th these are experienced people with decades of experience, and they really built an amazing product here. And again, like I said, before we move on to the other sections here of this platform, they really built a great engine to give you that two or three minute snapshot that is exactly what you need when you don't necessarily have time to go and drill deep and read all the analysis and all the all the filings, all the SEC filings uh, on your own. They kind of give you all the data here, present it, you look at it in two or three minutes, you kind of know, should I be looking into this stock more? Should I maybe initiate a position or not? It's kind of a, a great engine. Uh, let's talk about some of the other cool features that I use that are <laughs> amazingly well done here on this platform again. If you click on the news section here, uh, you can hide the full stories, get just the headlines and then kind of start drilling into the individual articles. What I always say is that Seeking Alpha is amazing in the, in the fact that you have so many differing opinions. You have a lot of bullish people, a lot of bearish people on a specific given stock, right? That really is completely different to when you just go on, onto the Wall Street coverage and you read a specific coverage from JP Morgan or from Citibank. Uh, that's that's one opinion of one analyst or one one team that kind of has one uh, coverage track right on a specific stock. You get a lot of diversity of opinions here, um, but you can also filter here. You can filter just for earnings news, for example. You can filter for M&A news. So the news section really gives you a breadth of information from all sorts of different people. Uh, and contributors, and we'll talk about them in a second because, you know, moving to the top here, if you look at the premium section, just let's just kind of run through the highlight of the top menu here and, and point out a few different things here. The premium section has a lot of great features, you know, top rated stocks in various different categories. So you can uh, go and explore and start drilling in here. But uh, I like this My Portfolio section here. I, you know, loaded up my stocks. You can connect this to your brokerage account. Uh, you definitely want to make sure, uh, again, this gives you a great snapshot of what your portfolio looks like. Uh, the, the colors on the right, the quant, uh, the essay authors and the Wall Street rankings, kind of just by colors and seeing those colors uh, kind of gives you an, uh, an, an impression of what your portfolio is looking at any given point in time. You definitely want to go into this manage alerts section here because the moment you're adding something to your portfolio, you start receiving all the news, all the articles that are published on a specific stock to your email. So you definitely don't want to uh, spam your email with 20,000 emails every single day. So you want to manage the alerts, but it's a great snapshot of what you own, right? Now moving to the right, my authors uh, and top authors. So I really like this top author section because this is a great way to start drilling deeper into who is covering what and who the top contributors are. Uh, so again, they are listed here by category. You have growth, value, uh, dividend, income investing, activist investing, portfolio strategy, technology, consumer industrial, gold, precious metals, financials, healthcare, oil and gas, economy, macro and forex. So again, from every single different point of view, 
uh, and look at the market, uh, you're getting top contributors. And I mean, some of these guys, uh, men and women are, you know, people that work at think tanks, uh, hedge funds, family offices, investment banks. These are uh, very often extremely experienced people that are publishing on Seeking Alpha. And you, again, like I said earlier, you're getting that diversity of opinion. Moving to the right again, self-explanatory here, top stocks, right, in various different kind of areas of the market, latest news, uh, kind of also obviously start drilling into the news, that are all the various different markets. Now, stock ideas, I really like this section here on stock ideas because in particular long ideas, right, gives you a lot of um, inspiration for what's out there, right? What are you not following? What maybe you are missing? What haven't you seen? So I always like this when I kind of talk about the shopping basket of stocks that people should have and should be following, uh, stocks that they are kind of following and want to buy at a certain level maybe. This always gives great ideas. In particular, uh, and I've seen this in a, a lot of reviews and comments uh, when it comes to Seeking Alpha, a lot of stocks that maybe haven't IPO'd yet or just IPO, there isn't a ton of coverage on them and you're able to catch these stocks before they have that explosive move higher. The dividend section, again, self-explanatory, a lot of dividend information, dividend ETFs, dividend ideas, real estate ETFs. Um, this ETF section on the right also uh, seems like the whole market is kind of moving towards ETFs and so many funds are in ETFs because that gives you that um, averaging out of different uh, exposure to different stocks. Now, this education section is something I want to spend a second on. When you think about who is actually uh, subscribing to Seeking Alpha, right? These are not only experienced investors that want to have a one point of um, uh, one place where they get all the analysis, all the data, where they can drill down, but also the variety of opinions from the contributors. But also people that are maybe just at the beginning of their journey, that are just starting to invest, that maybe just opened up their retirement account and just started working and just started contributing and started investing that way. And very often these are people that didn't learn this in schools. Uh, nobody really taught them about investing. And this is a great area where you can go and learn a lot about investing. Uh, you know, for example, I mean, you have all the categories here on the left, investing, portfolio management, ETF is a great section. You know, ETFs very often are misunderstood. People don't really know how ETFs work. If you kind of start scrolling down, you see that what is a bond uh, ETF? What is uh, an international ETF? What is a currency ETF? So you learn a lot about these things. I have to say, you know, I've, I've been in the market for 20 years uh, or so. Uh, I've been investing for uh, that long. And Seeking Alpha clearly has a lot of uh, contributors and a lot of information that uh, I'm learning every day from. Uh, so again, I, I think this is a very important section here. All right, really hope that you got a good overview of the Seeking Alpha platform here. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a 50% discount. If you use the link below uh, the video to sign up, it's essentially $15 a month. Uh, so when you kind of think about how much people pay financial advisors, typically around 1% of their assets, uh, $15 a month. If you're serious about investing, is really uh, ridiculously cheap and it's, it's an absolute bargain. Um, full disclosure here, Although this is not a sponsored video, I'm not getting paid to make this video, I will receive a percentage if you sign through uh, the link below the video. So you're getting a two week free trial, 50% off, uh, hopefully a win-win situation for everybody. But just on a personal note, I do wanna say, the intent of this channel is really to partner or you know help people invest and manage money, but only to partner with brands or products that um, are making it easier for people to do that. Uh, so I'm really proud to be working with Seeking Alpha. I think they managed to build an amazing product at a fraction of a price that it normally would cost to get this level and depth of information. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Give a like to the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next week.